Morning. Well, it feels like I haven't seen everybody for like two weeks. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and wave and say, hey, it's good to see you this morning. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, it's always good to be with the family. So why don't you just stand and join us with prayer this morning. And as we pray, we just want to pray against this virus that's floating around the world. As we do this. Father God, we just thank you for today, Heavenly Father. We thank you for coming down to join us today. As we sit here and worship and praise you today, Heavenly Father. We thank you for all that you're doing in us, Heavenly Father. Father God, we pray for those who may be out sick, who may be feeling down on the Heavenly Father. We just pray that you do sound and touch you in a divine way, Heavenly Father. Father God, I pray that you move upon this nation and move upon this world. Father, we just need to look up and believe in you, Heavenly Father. Father, God, we just thank you. We know that you're going to 
and I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. And man's empty praise, the treasures of faith, were never enough. And you came along and put me back together.
before we go into the next song, I need some things in my own personal life to shift into a life. It's not always because it's something I've done, but sometimes life can just get in the way. And we can sometimes allow it to get in the way. But I need some things to not only shift in alignment in my personal life, but I need it to shift into alignment in this house. For this city, for the region. If you're wanting something to shift into alignment, you have to decide to come into alignment. And I have destined today and the rest of this year to be in alignment with what God has ordained for things to become. And to make sure that I'm blocking things that have become distractions. Things that may try to come in as a distraction. But in order for things to shift into alignment, I also have to find a heart of worship. A place to where I surrender to him and I give him my everything. And I'm singing all day long, every day of the week. Not just on a Sunday morning. Not just on Sunday night. Not just on Wednesday. But every single day of my life, I start waking up with a song in my heart, even when I don't feel like it. When I was sick with COVID and laying on my couch while everybody else was in their own rooms, I was laying on the couch praying and singing and listening to God's word because I was so sick. I didn't feel good. I'll be honest with you. I really have never felt so bad in my life. And I needed God to do something for me. So I began to sing and worship because let's face it, when we don't feel good, we really don't want to sing. We don't want to talk to people. We don't want to be bothered. We don't want to have this. I don't. Just leave me alone. Let me be. But I found the strength inside myself. I couldn't pray, but I could put somebody else's prayer on. I found strength to put somebody else's song on. And you know what I found? As I began to be fed by somebody else, I began to be my own self. Because something inside of me stirred up and shifted inside of me to where I could take care of me again. So I'm challenging you today. I don't know what you need. I know what I need. But you can't tell me there's not anybody sitting in this house that doesn't need something to shift into alignment. But I challenge you to worship. He's in this house. He's been in the atmosphere all morning long. All we have to do is reach out and touch it. Reach out and grab it. So as they begin to sing this song, and it is called Atmosphere Shift, I'm beginning to declare that it will shift not only in my life, but it will shift in this house of God, that it will shift in the city of Orangeboro, that it will shift in your lives. But I can't just do it for you. You've got to want it for yourself. And when you sing the words, believe with inside of your heart that it's going to shift and that God's going to start moving like never before in your life. There is only one name. There is only one name. There is only the power to save. The power to save. The power to save. There is.
There is only one name with the power to save. With the power to save. His name is Jesus. And there is only one name. Speak the name Jesus. There is only one name. The power to save.
that you would have your will and your way in their lives, Father God, as you become everything that we need. Father, we thank you today, God, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a great time of worship this morning. You look good coming in the doors this morning. I tell you, it is, it is not the same when we don't get to see you on a Sunday morning. I got over here last Sunday morning and it was a feat just getting here, but I sat in my office a couple of hours getting ready to go live and some of you texted me and let me know that you appreciated me doing that, but that I sounded terrible last Sunday. Uh, it took all of my strength. By the time I left here, I was back home and in my chair by 11.30 Sunday morning, absolutely exhausted. Uh, and I wasn't much better on Monday. I hardly moved from my chair at all. Napped a lot, slept in a lot, and missed some phone calls from some of you calling to check on us. And I appreciate you doing that and texting and messaging and bringing things and leaving them on the back porch and all of those kinds of things. Because there were several days there that we just didn't feel like doing anything. The four of us kind of took care of each other. Whoever had a spurt of energy uh, that got up to do something took care of everybody else while they were up and then sat back down because it was over. There was one afternoon that I got up and, and I walked through the house and I just made a noise and did something kind of silly and the kids said, what was that? I said, that's all the energy I got. So I'm <laughs> Just enough to walk through, pretty much. Uh, so we're thankful that God has uh, given us the chance to come back today Amen. and to be back together and to to see all of your smiling faces coming in the door. Uh, thank you for understanding and thank you for uh, continuing to pray and love on your church family. We had uh, last week, uh, I believe, if I counted right, about ten cases of COVID at one time, uh, and we've had one or two since then that have not been related to being here, uh, that have picked it up somewhere else, and we've got a family out this morning that are battling COVID, so uh, keep praying for those around you, amen? amen. Uh, all of the doctors that, that, that we've talked to, the medical staff have said, just hold tight, it's pretty much inevitable that this one's going to get to everybody eventually, so... If you haven't had your turn yet, hold on. Uh, it may get you eventually. Uh, but I'll tell you, for our house, it was like a bad case of the flu. Uh, and Robitussin and flu and cold. I'm not doing a commercial for them. But that was a lifesaver uh, that ended up on our back porch. And we tried it. And it, it helped tremendously to get us through the process. So God is good. Amen? Amen. Always. He's always Amen. good to us. Even when we don't feel good. He's still good to us. Even when we're struggling, He's still good to us. We want to give back to Him this morning just a little bit, uh, giving our tithes and offerings today. Kim, will you come? Nikki? And let's receive our tithes and offerings today. Father, we thank You for Your giving to us. And all the things that You give us in our lives, Father, we thank You, Lord, for the opportunity to give back to You in our tithes and offerings. We ask that You bless it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
see what he's done for you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we were talking last week that uh, it was a year ago this month that we had our last COVID outbreak. So we made it one year without several cases at one time in the church. Some of the ones that had it a year ago had it again this year. So we kind of celebrated the anniversary there. Uh, <laughs> a couple of things that we moved uh, because of the COVID closing us last week. Uh, one thing that we moved was our church conference, uh, which was scheduled for last Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. And I said last Sunday we'll move it to the end of the month, which is next Sunday at 4 o'clock. And then resuming in February, several of you have asked, when are we going to get back to having Sunday evening services? Well, let's go ahead and bite the bullet and do it in February. The first Sunday of February, we'll go back to 5 o'clock services. Uh, and there'll be ch regular church services. We'll, we'll see what God has for us and what happens. Uh, but you plan to come out two weeks from today for that. God is so good. Amen. So this month we've been talking about being intentional. I don't know about you, but uh, being intentional has not gone the way I thought it would. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought we had everything lined out and everything was just moving right straight forward. And then we hit a wall two weeks ago. <laughs> um, we've talked about some interesting things this month. Being intentional in growing ourselves. Being intentional in our outreach. Being intentional in our fellowship, which we haven't been able to do the last two weeks. Being intentional uh, in uh, loving God. Being intentional in fasting. And two weeks ago, I challenged you. We started a Daniel fast. And for many of us that had COVID at our house, Daniel went out the window and it was whatever you could get down at that moment. Uh, and I went through about five days where I kept telling my family the only thing that would make the meal better is if I could taste it. Uh, I, about five days, I had no taste or smell. So... Everything tasted good. I, I imagined what it would be. Um, <laughs> somebody brought a, uh, some donuts to the house, and I, I was eating a donut. They said, does it taste good, Dad? I said, it's strawberry and blueberry with a hint of banana. I said, what? <laughs> it was a plain donut. <laughs> I said, why not? I said, why not? <laughs> <laughs> but that was the joke that kept us laughing even while we were sitting <laughs> making fun of Dad. Uh, so this week I want us to talk about being intentional about loving people. This is the second commandment of the top two. I'm not talking about the Big Ten. I'm talking about the top two. The two that Jesus said are the most important first one being loving God and the second one being loving people I don't know if you've noticed but over the last couple of years hatred has spread faster than the virus dissension and disagreement and argument has spread faster than the virus itself and unfortunately it seems to be a sign of the time because many of us stood back and watched and thought, well, surely we'll eventually get our act together here and it'll all go away. But it seems to still be spreading. We've argued over everything from whether you should get a shot or not, whether you should see a doctor or not, whether you really had COVID or not, whether you should wear a mask or not, whether gloves do any good, if hand sanitizer is laced with something else or not. I mean, we've, we've gone down the gamut of everything you can think of to argue about. And if you've noticed, it's an, it, it's an attack of the enemy. Because we roll from one thing to the next one. Come on. And just as one thing dies down, here comes the next wave. If you pay attention to the media, that's how it seems to happen. If there's not enough clamoring about this subject, we'll move to this one and see what kind of stir gets created. Maybe I'm the only one that sees that kind of stuff, but I see it as a problem in our society today. I want us to go to Mark chapter 12. Read a few verses here. Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 31. 
And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus tells us in Matthew 22 and 40 that all the law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. Imagine that, that something is so important in Scripture. You want to know what the most important part of Scripture is? That may be it right there. That everything else would hang on that. Uh, the law, the prophets, the 39 Old Testament books, the 27 New Testament books, the 1,189 chapters, and 31,102 verses, 783, 137 words in our Bible, all can be summed up into two commands. These Verses, 38 words that says that we must love God first yeah. and love others yes. second. Now that doesn't put you in the middle, does it? No, come on. That doesn't say you should love yourself better than you do anybody else, but it says you should love everybody else like you do yourself. Uh -huh. We have it mixed up a lot of times in our society with the Number one, we take care of number one, the, the big eye in the room. We take care of ourselves and let everybody else fend for themselves. But can I tell you that if we're reading the scripture for what it says, first and for, foremost, our number one attention should be on Jesus. Yeah. Right, come on. And then secondly, on everybody else yeah. around us. Right. You see, we love God with everything that we have inside of us. And I know I talked about this Last week, but I want to hit it again for you just in case you didn't join me online last Sunday. Amen. Uh, Jesus was quoting Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5. I say that because I looked for some of you and didn't see you there. Uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 5. He, he was quoting here. It says, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love was agapeo. Uh, the agape love, right. uh, perfect love, yeah. God's love, love that cannot be recreated, right. love that cannot be outdone, a love that reaches to you even when you're absolutely unlovable Come and on. picks you up. There's an old song that said God reached way below the bottom and picked me up. Can I tell you today, God's love will reach you wherever you oh. are in your yeah. life yeah. and Preach. grab your heart. Pastor. And pull you into a relationship with Him. In other words, Jesus is saying here to love God completely with everything you've got. Yes. Your heart, which literally means the center of your physical and spiritual life. The Greek word used there is the same word we get the word cardio from today. Uh huh. They will tell you if you're trying to be healthy, what you need to do is some cardio. Some exercise that causes the heart to pump the blood a little bit better in your body. Can I tell you what we need in the church today is some cardio exercise. I'm not talking about the physical kind that takes care of the physical body, but the spiritual kind that causes our heart to swell with more love for our fellow man. With all of your soul, which is the seat of your feelings, your desires, your affections. This is where psychiatrists uh, talk about when they're talking about mental health, the psyche, that place inside of you. Listen, everything has to be wrapped around Jesus. Your mind, your way of thinking, your feeling, your faculty of understanding. If I apply everything I know back to Jesus, it takes on a whole different picture. Wow. Your strength, your ability, your force, your strength, your might, 
everything that is in you has to be focused on loving God. Yeah. Amen. And once we grasp the concept of loving God, then we can move to the second commandment. Uh huh. You ever hear the word, and it's so, it's so cliche today, people don't like to hear it in the business world now because it's been overused so much when people say, I'm a people person. <laughs> well, what does that really mean? Come on. It's muddied in the waters today from what its original intention was. Uh, and it's so cliche today, well, I'm a people person. I, mean, I like to be around people. Well, some of us are people watchers. I like to sit back and watch people. I don't necessarily like to be around them. I like to be around you, but not out in public so much. But I don't mind sitting back and watching people and seeing the silliness of God's creation. Some of us are goofy looking. Some of us are goofy acting. Uh, some of us walk funny. Some of us can't talk without moving our arms and hands. Come on. We're comical beings. Yes. We're a comical part of creation. But listen, we have to understand that looking at each other, we see the one thing that we all have in common. And that is that we have the same creator. That's right. God created all of us and he said that we are good Amen. in his sight. Go back to Genesis. It says that when he created man, he looked at man and he said he's good. Right. And when he created woman, he looked at her and he said, she's good. That's right. As he did with everything else in creation. So when you look at someone and you can't see what God created, you might need to change your eyesight just a little bit. Come on. And understand that we don't offer the creator advice. Come on. Come on. But we take what he created for the beauty that he sees in it. Amen. So we talk about loving God because of who God is. Then we have to fulfill that second commandment, which is to love others. To love your neighbor. Right. Some people say, well, that's easy as long as my neighbor is family. <laughs> Or somebody I like real well. <laughs> then it becomes easy. But when it really comes to a challenge. Is when your neighbor becomes somebody. You don't care so much for. Come on. Help us Jesus. And you love them anyway. Come on. Or somebody that's hurt you in the past. So listen your neighbor is not who's close to you in proximity. Your neighbor is absolutely everybody. That you come in contact with. That's right. You may say well I don't come in contact with that many people. You don't ever go out of your house. Come on, even those that try not to have to from time to time. Huh? Called several of you on that one, didn't I? We do have to go out into public from time to time. And I, you, you know me well enough. You heard me say that I just despise going to Wally World. I just don't like to get out and go in there. It's not a fun place for me. And I've gotten worse the older I get. That I like, I like it less uh, the more that I'm uh, getting older. But listen, I've learned that even when I'm out in Wally World, a place that I may not love so much, I still can love all those neighbors that are around me. That's right. right. Inevitably, you're going to encounter someone and just because they have an attitude and act like they don't like their job doesn't mean that you have an attitude and act like you don't like them. Right. Come on. Maybe I, I've witnessed Melissa a few times telling people that are running registers, I will pray that your day gets much better and that you find some joy in the day. Because they appear to not have any whatsoever. It is impossible to know God and not love others. So for those of us who say, well, loving God's easy for me, but I don't know about loving others. Well, you can't love them without loving God first. And if you can't love them, then I'm not sure about your relationship in loving God. First John 4 and 8 says, the one who does not love does not know God because God is love. Yes. 
That's right. Man. Ouch. First John 4 and 10 says, Love consists in this, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Verse 11 says, Dear friends, if God loves us in this way, we also must love one another. Amen. If He loves us so much that He gave His Son for us, then we must love each other. Not just inside the four walls of the church, but our fellow man out there as well. Well, it's easy for us to love in here. We all have some things in common. We get to know each other just a little bit, enough to at least love on each other. If we knew everybody real well, we might not love them as much, but it, you get to see the church face here, and you get to love that real easy, right? Because we've got so much in common. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> mean streak. First John 4 and 19 says, We love because He first loved us. Yeah. You cannot love others without first experiencing the amazing love of God right. for yourself. That's right. So when we love Him, His love spills over. Right. Brother Sim shared a song with us a few years ago. I've not heard it for a while, but somebody shared it on Facebook the other day and reminded me of drinking from my saucer because my cup has overflowed. It's an old song. But it speaks to the, to the volume of love that God has for us. He's overrun our container. Amen. And it spills on to somebody else. Right. Amen. 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 Jeremiah 31 and 3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued to extend faithful love to you. King James says, I have drawn you with loving kindness. I've drawn you. We've been drawn closer to Him because of His love. Amen. And now because of that, we're able to love somebody else. How do we know that we have been born of God? It's love. That's right. 1 John 4 and 7 says, Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God. And everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Everybody who loves is born of God and knows God. The Bible says, Jesus said, to love your neighbor as yourself. Every person that you come in contact with. That takes it beyond just those that are look like you or believe like you or dress like you or think like you Come on. Uh, Come on. that breaks up everything we've been hearing the last two years doesn't it Sorry, in the media that means that those who love God have experienced a love that reaches beyond every barrier that we've placed into the human man and if God loves us that much then we ought to love Everyone else around us that make that much. It means that we love people of every race, every color, every tribe, every nation, uh, every religion. Uh, what? We have to love people that aren't Christians? You better learn to. What if they're Islam? What if they're Muslims? Well, what if they're Hare Krishnas? What if they're atheists and don't believe in any? What if they're pagans? What if they're heathens? Well, so many of us at one point in life. Uh, every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every background, every personality. We've got to love them regardless of who they are or where they came from. Help us, Jesus. What if, why, why, why will they, what if they hate us? Jesus said you love even those who hate you. That's right. Why? Why would we love those that hate us? Why would they, we love those that persecute us? Why would we love those that use us and abuse us? Because 
God's love in us, pouring outward to others, is the authenticator of the true believer. In other words, love is what demonstrates to the world our faith in Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter if you wear the t-shirt, so can anybody else that shops. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. Come on, you can wear your bracelet and your necklace. You can put the cross around your neck. But until you learn to show the love of God, those are just symbols of someone's faith. Come on. You can wear that stuff and not believe in Jesus whatsoever. That's right. That's true. Go ahead, Pastor. It's all right. That's not a true symbol of what's on the inside. But your love coming out to other people will prove if you're the real deal or not. That's right. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. John 13, 35. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. And by this love, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. That's right. See, it's not about the church name badge that you wear. It's not about the church title that we carry. That's right. You've heard me say, I don't tell people that I'm a pastor. I don't even tell them that I have that position. I just tell them my name and let them figure the rest out. Inevitably, it'll come back around and they'll figure it out. It's comical to listen to people and say, oh, you, I, I don't know who you are really, but you, you carry some peace about you that you're comforting to have in the room. Yeah. Oh, mercy, what a heavy load to carry. Amen. You're always joyful. You're always laughing. You're, well, there's something to that. Yeah. Amen. It's not just my personality. It's not just me. It's who's inside of me. Right. Right. He's saying love is the greatest authenticator that you are a true follower and believer. See, in today's marketplace, we see knockoffs all the time. Yeah. People will sell you uh, something with a, with a name. You pay for the name. But you can buy the knockoff a whole lot cheaper. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's right. that, that, that product called Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> if it's got the name on it, you might pay, what, hundreds? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Shopping. I shop at Clarence's house. <laughs> but you find a knockoff that has a symbol on it that looks real similar, and it would fool many of us. No. For a very affordable price. Come on. I saw somebody the other day trying to sell a collection of Michael Kors purses. On marketplace, a collection of them, and they were like thirty bucks a piece in a hundred. Really? And the more I got to looking at it, Melissa likes Michael Kors. And I thought, well, that's a deal. I got to looking at it; and it's not the real stuff. It's the knockoffs. Come on. Some of us may go to the store and buy a certain kind of food and have to only be able to buy. The name brand because the knockoff don't taste the same. Anybody else ever done that? Yeah. Come on. You open a bag of Doritos and put it next to some generic nachos, it's not the same. The texture's not right, the flavor's not right. Now it'll work, I'll eat it anyway, but it's not the same. We experience the knockoffs. They're cheaper. Can I tell you, in the kingdom of God, there are no knockoffs. Come on. The cheaper is not the answer. That's right. Those that have a good look but have a bad heart are Come not on. the answer Come to on. the problem. And they will stir the pot of aggression. Come on. Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah. And negativity and division because the heart is not right Help us, to start Jesus. with. Help us, Jesus. Even duplicating the logo doesn't make it the original. Go ahead. Come on. Come on. That's good. Go ahead. Pastor. You can wear every Christian emblem that we've got and still be a hateful old sourpuss. Amen. 
I had a great great grandmother that they said was one of the meanest women you'd ever want to meet. She outlived all of her husbands. She sat with her hand on the telephone most of the day so she could pick it up and listen when the party lines were. She knew when the phone rung and vibrated down the street. She'd pick it up and listen to all the gossip and knew everything going on in the community without ever leaving her house. She wore the long sleeve dress with an apron. She was fully covered in clothes because she went to a Pentecostal church. She even wore her bonnet when she went outside in the sun and made sure she was covered completely with her heart. Oh, Come on, Pastor. Oh, God. Okay. It was Henri. I won't say it was bad, but it was Henri. <laughs> Some of us might not quite fall in the category of being on the outskirts of being a Christian, but we hadn't completely got on the inskirts of it either. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. It might be those that have a form of godliness but deny the power that is there. Many belong to a denomination, but the denomination will not get you to heaven. See it. Ah. <sighs> Many belong to a specific church. They follow a specific pastor or minister, but that will not get you to heaven. That's right. Amen. And it will not cause others to want to follow you either. Come on. Amen. Matthew 23 and 27 talks about people looking good on the outside, but being filled with dead men's bones on the inside. Mm. In other words, they are full of death and destruction. Amen. So what separates us, the knockoffs, from the real thing? Well, it's not the way you look, but it is the way you behave. That's right. Paul goes on to say it this way in 1 Corinthians 13 and 13. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. That's right. You can have all the faith in the world and don't have love and you'll miss the mark. Uh -huh. Amen. You can have all the hope to encourage everybody around you and not have love, and you've missed the mark. That's right. Because love will help us in reaching others. If it is, if we truly love God, then it should become our second nature Amen. to love people. That's right. I don't know about you, but I find myself. It sometimes just wondering about people. You just wonder about it. What are they thinking? What, what, were, what was their rationale for that decision? What, what did they think was going to happen if they did that? What did they expect to happen when they were mean and ugly to everybody around them? Now they're complaining that they don't have friends, but the Bible teaches us to have friends, we have to be friendly. Right. So how do we get to that place where we love people? We fall in love with God. Right. I don't know about you, but even during this season that we're in now, even this last couple of weeks, when I couldn't be together with those that I love, when I couldn't get out and go to work, I couldn't get out and go anywhere. I didn't have the energy to get out and go anywhere. I walked to the mailbox and wore out. <laughs> Even in those moments, though, when I stepped out of my house and looked around, did my breathing exercises with fresh air, people were coming and going up and down the street. Kids were playing outside, and I could hear the hustle and bustle of life. And my heart went out to people. Because I love people. My. We love them if we first love God. Amen. 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 Would you stand with me this morning? I want us to pray together today. And if you feel comfortable doing so, you're close enough to somebody, probably somebody you came with or you're close to, would you reach over and just put a hand on each other's shoulder? Or join hands or something, if you're comfortable.
and pray for each other. God would help us to learn to love those around us. Father, we thank you today for the opportunity to come together. Lord, we thank you for your keeping power. We thank you for your mercy and grace on us. We thank you, Lord, for the way that you know how to take care of us when we don't know how to take care of ourselves. Father, we ask today, God, that as you have shown us your great love and compassion, that you would help us to share that love with others around us. To begin to love our those that we come in contact with in greater ways than we ever have. Father, to love those neighbors, those co-workers, those people that we encounter in public as much as we would love our friends and our family members. Father, we thank you today, God, for strengthening us. We thank you today, God, for giving us the ability to love. Hallelujah. And Father, I ask, Lord, that you would help each of us to implement that power into our lives, into those around us. And we give you thanksgiving today for all that you're doing in us as individuals. Father, now we turn toward those in our family that are sick, those that are battling, those that are struggling. Father, we pray that you would touch them and that you would be everything that they need you to be today. Lord, we honor you in this place. And we thank you for all you do. In Jesus' name. And amen. I'm not going to tell you to shake hands and be friendly, but be friendly with each other. Brother Greg, you got something to share?